the bottom left hand corner of our screen, it's the Blue Terran! Dust Gaming Apocalypse. <laughs> And his opponent in the top right hand corner. I'm gonna troll Drenok by doing the Drenok voice. It's the Red Terran player in the top right. Cosmic Cloud, Juggernaut Jason. I was close to trolling myself. So close. So close to trolling myself right there. Yes. Both players opening quite similar. TVT is just scary at the moment. And X, X Kawhi has been doing some really cool stuff in TVT with Cyclone Hellion, though. He's been throwing that in there. That's also EJK. I'm, I'm going to take that back. EJK has been doing cool EJK stuff. That, well. that has gone into X Kawhi and kind of making a build that's not a macro sit back and play safe. It's a, I'm going to get right up into your face with Cyclones and Hellions and just gun everything down on your mineral line. Yep. And uh, here at the Adept Starcraft League, we do like to see a lot of Adepts, but we're not going to see any in this matchup. Like APM is zero this game. APM is zero. zero. Really sad to see an APM of zero. Um, but, you know, sometimes that's just uh, that's how you got to look at it. You know, just APM is zero. Nothing you can do about it. We do have both players starting off nice and equal. A little bit of Reaper Expand action from both players. And we're just kind of looking out for some divergence here. Jason going to have the defensive Reaper. Going to try to get a bit of advantage here. Hang out in the main. Look for any sort of proxies. You can see both players right off the bat going for two Reapers. Because there's so many times where your opponent go three racks Reaper. And you, you just need an extra Reaper at home. And potentially if their Reaper goes in the main, as you said, with that defensive Reaper, you can throw it back onto them. Even if they're going heavy Reaper, you kill their first Reaper. You often see Hellion plays off the back of that. And you get right up into your face. The meta at the moment, TBT, is very, very he heavy Reaper Hellion. Uh, if you can make something go the other way, or if you can kill one Reaper earlier on, you do, that's why you see both of them moving into packs of two. They don't want to take that risk. And here they meet in the middle. Already KD8 charges from Apocalypse. Force Jason to pull back. And Apocalypse is going to fall back with slightly more health. I'm not going to hang out on the high ground here for a sec. And nice little posi uh, defensive position. So it allows basically if he were to try to move across the map and not really be paying attention, he would run right into those dudes. And... Uh, Peely Peely in the chat, he's crying about the zero APM. He's very sad. Sorry, Peely, when you win this fast with your APM, you know, you, he wasn't, you, were, you were the APM of the group, and now it's gone. To be honest, he wasn't really heavy APM, though. It was more heavy charge. Yeah, so he was yeah it was like a APM medium himself. APM at best. Like 10, so 15. I imagine if he had gone full APM, I mean, those games would have been won in a minute. So faster. Yeah, it would have been so quicker. Jason yeah. with a very quick third CC. Now, I like this, but still... These early game Reaper v Reaper battles can spiral out of control quickly if you don't pull back, and especially when you're fighting your opponent on their home turf, it's going to be rough. For now, the Reaper can pressure the Supply Depot, though, so at least they can keep Apocalypse back in his base. A yep, couple of Reapers, four Marines, totally ready to take out one of these Reapers. Comes in from two angles, so he can try to get oh, the holy. best out off possible. Nice! The Cyclone. Gets to oh. see pretty much everything there. Knows all the setup of his opponent and big scan coming in from Apocalypse. He knows who's got the advantage where, and so do we, Jason. Oh man! Long-term economic advantage in favor of him and Apocalypse. It's a bit more of that tech advantage with the earlier Cyclone, but uh, Apocalypse throws try to down make a some CC. damage happen here. Cut into that economic advantage that Jason is attempting to secure. Medivac moves out, Cyclone on the left hand side just defending any other Medivac drops, and for Apocalypse, in Jason's natural base, he's gonna be met by a Viking and four Marines, I think with the, of course, defender's advantage and the size of the map, Jason is just gonna be fine, but again, he lost those two Reapers, wasn't the best move he could have done, that would have provided a lot of scouting into the third base of Apocalypse for all, but he was able to do that, scout him in, and sees a lack of that, and definitely sees a lack of, oh, no nice gonna positioning drop here. Excellent deflection back. with the Viking. Very, very well done. Uh, Jason doing quite well. And really looking a little bit scared right now. Making sure, being very careful that he doesn't take that third base too early. He does have the position. Uh, but this is a moment where Apocalypse can come back a little bit. 
the worker counts only slightly in favor of Jason right now, and still not moving into that third base, despite the passivity from his opponent. Yep, both players do have an engineering blade, and almost at the exact same time, start plus one. I love when the meta has formed in mirror matchups to the point where you do have that, oh, engineering blade at the same time, CCs, fourth bases. Both players know exactly what is going down. Apocalypse being very careful, and oh, nice Reaper. And we gotta remember, as I was mentioning, early early win by Apocalypse killing Jason's Reaper simply allows him to say, oh, you're taking your third CC now. Maybe I can go for a drop, maybe I can move it out. Barely will not Oh, be nice. Tries nice. to block Beautiful him, but the tank position. is in perfect position. Yeah, very nice. And uh, we'll start dropping mules at that third base. Uh, if you're a new Terran player, dropping mules at your freshest base is oftentimes the best way to go. So that way you mine out a little bit more evenly and you can utilize all of your workers for longer. This is, of course, beautiful and something. You, you, you don't, we, we don't want to be better. We don't want to be better. We want to stay watching these amazing players. And for now, Apocalypse. Apocalypse, both players, it, as I was saying, with the meta, completely mirroring each other. But we have two Reapers for Apocalypse. And for now, got Marines spreading out. Also some Vikings for Jason Sensor on his side of the map. Getting too. some really beautiful yeah. vision. Yeah. Sensor Towers, too. And we saw that in the previous matchups. Getting two sensor towers on the on his side of the map, being really, really careful. And honestly, if you're going for a timing attack, it will hit you pretty hard, that gas. But if you're not, generally, I'd say it's just a good move if you're afraid of playing a better player and you just want to keep a hold on everything and not be surprised by crazy stuff. Yeah, I think uh, it's, I think it's 100 gas. It's 125, 100 for the cost of the sensor tower, pretty sure. So 200 yeah. gas is going to cut into you pretty hard. But uh, overall... Just macroing up. Yeah, overall, it's it's not too bad because you have the earlier third base. Uh, so being a little bit more defensive, look at the fission. I love this. Not only does he have sensor towers, <gasps> he's, he's got units the all over the map. And that those units being out are what's going to alert him to this drop very early. Let's see what he can do to deal with it. If anyone's seen 2D Sparrow, by the way, I was watching his videos today. And this is exactly like, yeah, I'm just setting out Marines in random directions. Like, ah. Here we have Marines in these directions. Not so random, though. They're spotting things moving across the map. The right-hand side, they see Apocalypse with two Marines. And really, just Marines just everywhere, man. This is this is crazy for Jason. He wants to know exactly what's happening. And thankfully for him, the Siege Tanks are pulling back into the third base. As you mentioning earlier on, there was a slight economic lead, but now it's, it's pretty so much small. the same. Yeah, I mean, the whole time he got that early third CC, but he didn't really make it, uh, use of it by getting that third base up and running. Uh, for a long time, so he really only had his third base a, a small amount uh, ahead of his opponent, and that actually gives an advantage to Apocalypse because Apocalypse got to use money on all kinds of other things, and he could delay that command center, but still got the base at about the same time. As you can see, upgrade-wise, the stim and other upgrades for Jason are just slightly delayed where Apocalypse did have them completed if you wanted to move out, but with the cool siege tank micro, he er, didn't do a ton of damage. It still could have. No, Apocalypse does have a sensor tower of himself to, or for himself, and that will defend a little bit this fourth base position. It looks like he's going to move out. He does have a fourth CC on the way, but this is going to be a phenomenal avenue up the right-hand yes, side. Man. If you look for on the right-hand side, the ramp is very close to the edge of the sensor tower in Jason's place. Instead of coming from the left-hand side, you'd be in the sensor tower for a very long time. So probably unless he goes for a big drop, that's the uh, best decision to go. Yeah, very nice positioning, like team. you're saying, with those, with those sensor towers and... He's going to start moving his tank back out. These fourth bases, again, timed super similarly. Uh, players very evenly matched. And that's kind of a lot of times what happens when two strong players play a passive game like this. It's difficult for anyone to get ahead. Uh, Jason oh. has done a great job so far defending the, the small aggressions of Apocalypse. And nice scan. Double scans, both of them. Apocalypse knows that he's oh, not home. Beautiful. Jason knows that he's moving across, and this is a willful base trade Apocalypse. by both players. They're both intentionally saying, oh, I've got the base trade over you. And uh, nice defensive position on the high ground. Going to get some shots off with the tanks. Meanwhile, Jason plunging into this third base, absolutely wrecking everything to pieces. And it looks like the third and fourth base of Jason getting taken out uh, in equal. Oh, it looks like he's taking his siege tanks and bringing them back home. Not getting two good shots off in the beginning, and these siege tanks for Jason yeah, starting Jason. to push into the main. It's all about who can get into the main at this point, and it looks like Apocalypse got is here in the main. Oh. Can he get the bio units in support over here? Looks like he's doing a pretty good job. 
uh, taking out a lot of the structures. Apocalypse on the defensive. Jason with the supply lead as well. A whole bunch of the supply of Apocalypse is across the map doing nothing right now. For the majority of this, and even when it right started, Jason had three siege tanks sieged up in his main when Apocalypse went in, while Apocalypse had zero and had to reposition them, had to siege them down, and overall, Jason back at home has been completely fine. Now, Jason has a slight stranglehold on Apocalypse, or Apocalypse's units out of the map. He could shut this down, yet in this situation, he's shut down, and you just gotta think, though, Apocalypse has a base awkwardly on the right-hand side. He's cut off, yet overall, yeah, with that production, I feel like a Jason, he just dealt with it just slightly better. He was more prepared back at home with the siege tanks while Apocalypse well, leaving was leaving a lot of those units all alone. Scan is going to reveal that. There are no medevacs for these tanks. He's going to push right out. He's going to lose three tanks and a bunch of marines. Uh, uh, moves I don't forward, know. But I don't the know. army kind of, of Jason on the right-hand side there. cancels the 4th CC. That was, that was the economy for Apocalypse. While Apocalypse lost both CCs and Jason has his third, though. Jason's going to be able to mine and start supplementing this army while Apocalypse will not be able to. Yeah, and here we go. We have the tank evac for both players. We are looking at a big tank advantage for Apocalypse. Ten tanks to oh, five. Man, he's got this, this surrounding so force, difficult. too. He doesn't need to crack this. He does not need to attack right now. Yeah, and that's incredibly important. Also on the other side of the map, it looks like uh, we had a medevac drop from Apocalypse in the top right, but still, Jason is posturing oh, no. to attack this. Not only with it, oh, very nice drop. But at the same time, Jason's gonna lose all his sight. Tank so quickly. The medevacs boost forward for Apocalypse, and the tank team in a very aggressive position. Marines are aggressive, but there's oh just not enough God. here for Jason. Get on Look out of there while you have a chance. Get the on there while you have a chance. Littering the, the other third the base. Oh my oh. God! Absolute annihilation. Annihilation. Double the tank count. He ran years. right into it. Oh my God. The top right, though, the drop from Apocalypse kills 21 workers in this entire time. He's still an army on the left-hand side of just Marines for Apocalypse. Oh, I thought he was going to go for a flank, but Jason is just a slight misstep Huge and got hit by a there. train. Gigantic He's an inch, but he got hit by a train. Oh, man. Uh, small force over here of the Marines of Apocalypse are going to see if they can deny any sort of fourth base action. Yes, this third base is up, but Jason just took a huge hit there. Jason has a decent army. It's on the right-hand side. He's trying to do something, but he just—he needs to secure his bases and needs to be as defensive as possible. But these Marines right underneath that CC, it's so important that it doesn't go down. Oh, and it's gone. If that would have maybe got up, he would have had an economic lead over Apocalypse. But now Apocalypse is taking his third and fourth back. Both players have punched each other solidly and both have lost teeth. But Apocalypse is looking a little bit better. Not only that, but plus 3-3 three, three is on the way. Once that finishes up, his bio is going to be able to steamroll over anything Jason throws at him. Jason is in a desperate situation. He's behind in every sense in technology, army, and economy. He has to make damage happen now or it's all over. Jason moving into this third base, but Apocalypse just has so many siege tanks, seven siege tanks of Apocalypse to the two of Jason. Not only that, but he is also slightly up. That is Apocalypse and Marines. It looks like it's going to happen right now. Not quite. All the siege tanks are down. Oh, big stim forward, and Jason trying to make it happen, but there's simply too much here for Apocalypse or for Jason. JJ Apocalypse wins the first game in this best of three match 1 0. But Dan Corner. It is the Blue Darren player. Dust Gaming Apocalypse. And his opponent. Spawning on the other side of the map in the only <gasps> other spawn position available. Yeah. The Red Terran. Cosmic Cloud, Juggernaut Jason. My entire StarCraft II career, I've always wanted a mod that would just randomize where you start on a map. It would just throw you out a mineral patch. Any, yeah, I always, any. any it, you could be right next to each other, it doesn't cool matter. That would be, be such really a really cool funny. Mod. Oh man, that'd be really fun. But like, you just start off on the islands, like, well, well okay. Yeah, no. But, but it's gotta be different for both of you, so you could have the chance that you just start off next to each other. Just, yeah, you, you could literally be, oh, I'm in the main, you're in the natural, I'm on the high ground, guess what, you're dead. Yeah, but it would, I always thought that'd be the coolest thing. Jason has a very early scout from this, and you know he's, he's being careful. He lost that last game. He's one game away from being out, but he doesn't want that to happen. He's going to get up and get the scout, and honestly, I don't know if it'll be a wasted scout, but he's just going to say, cool, at least you're not through x reaper me. You're not going to say I'm overconfident. Apocalypse is playing this safe. Very careful. Yep. 
Knowing is half the knowledge, as it's often times said, and we do have that worker running in. He'll be able to scout the expand and everything, and he'll say, okay, same build. Fantastic. Nothing too crazy. It does get locked out, and uh, or locked in, rather, excuse me. Is gonna oh, man, that SCB, have a small so dance a party over to the over, yeah. over the problem. Wow. You you know, that's a that's seizure, the twist right there. You know, to me, I feel like that was a dance party. It's just he's so good at dancing. I agree. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so man. So quickly, you know. He's dancing for us. He saw us looking in the sky. Yeah. Wait, let's think about this for once. I remember a Reddit post about a guy saying, you know what, in the lore, how does the general know everything that's going on? Well, in the lore, do they just see a camera in the sky and like, whoa, the over camera. So uh, let's move it around. Yeah, Ooh, very this is nice all position satellite with this Reaper. It's, it's, it's given. It's given like psionically for Zerg and for Protoss, but for Terran, it's got to be like a satellite feed of, of uh, of the situation. <laughs> uh, do that five minutes later. Oh, okay, they didn't do it, boss. Dang it! Ah, and Apocalypse again is playing this incredibly safe. Six hundred seconds of Ling, not milliseconds. Yeah, so, so what much, is that? So much cag. Many, it's how, cag lag. Tag lag. Tag lag. That's that, the word. That 60, is... 600,000 milliseconds of ping. That's pretty bad. That would be bad. Watch out for that stuff. The cat Jason, lag. so dang aggressive, but Apocalypse has got a Reaper and two Marines. It all depends. Which side do you move up, Jason? Which side, side do you move up? He's going to go well. in the middle. Idiot charges. Doesn't lose that much, but he's trying to make something happen. Oh, the dodges. Nice. Oh. Apocalypse <laughs> oh, lowers the supply depots, sends the Marines out a little bit too, but this does provide an alleyway on the left hand side, the leftmost hand side of this. Of this place for the Reapers to jump up with Jason if they want to. For now, I man, this this is this is a dangerous game he's playing because if something wrong goes ha happens, it's oh, so easy nice like that. Bad. Well, maybe not like that, but the KDH charge helps them. Yeah, oh, uh, it takes out a, a little bit of damage there. Now it's one Reaper versus one Reaper. Apocalypse gonna move out on the map and get control. Two man, Reaper and the drugs are kicking in. Behind. Yeah, we, we have cracklings. What are these heroin addict reapers? They have combat drugs. Love it. Yeah, you want some combat drugs, kid? Take the combat drugs. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what the combat drugs are. Some some kind of. It's not a stim pack though, right? It's different. Yeah, it's it's it combat heals. drugs. It's it, very yeah. healing. You know? It is. It is futuristic. Oh, beautiful. He's gonna be able to snipe the SCV. Delays the fourth. Pardon me. Third CC is second, but an SCV is there to do it. And, this Reaper gets in. I'd, I'd rather it scout behind the main mineral line if it would have the capability to, but for now it dies, gets two kills, and oh, there it dies, gets three kills. But essentially, both players are playing what they did last game. Oh man, the other Reaper gets in too. Oh man, the heals! The auto repair is gonna save the workers. Auto repair <laughs> saves the day. Nicely done there. This is a macro safe TVT play from both of these players. Yeah, one, the one variation being Jason going for the double Reaper early on and failing with it, getting a little bit behind as a result. Uh, but other than that, yeah, pretty, pretty safe play for both players here. Apocalypse with his drop now, it's only eight Marines. Do we have any upgrades for either player? The answer is no. No tech lab also to get anything from on the racks, at least for now. So it's going to be unupgraded Marines. Viking is out, Cyclone is out. And last game we saw Jason have a phenomenal defense. But this time, there's Vikings no going defense. Going to the wrong side. Natural. Yeah, Vikings on yeah, the wrong Viking side. going to the left, so a bit of a incorrect guess. Incorrect hypothesis here. He's actually got everything. The random gods at work, man. This game is too much RNG. RNG Jesus. Yep. RNG Jesus in favor of Apocalypse Ralph right and now. Jesus. Ralph and Jesus, man. I don't even know what that is. But all oh, the Marines. One Marine. That's the hero Marine right there. Pushes back the medevac. And that's the situation where you're happy that Apocalypse is that good control, but he one Marine forces him back, or at least he sees it and forces him back. Yep, very good reaction time there from Apocalypse. Very strong. We do have Stim finally starting up over here from Apocalypse first, and it's going to be advantage there as that gap gets bigger. Stim. So much quicker, yeah. Very important. We're almost at a minute ahead of time here. So we'll have to see how that develops going forward here. And he's also got the double. Uh, engineering bays as well. So Jason opting for um, a little bit more army supply here. Let's see if he can take advantage of it. Both players getting their thirds at about the same time. Nice scout with his uh, Marine. One thing to note for Stim is yes, he has the lead, which is always really important, but in TVT and in last game, we didn't see him try to hit some timing. He just kind of went out scouted, came back in, and then eventually when he was taking his fourth, he said, okay, all right, I should probably move out now. So even with that stim, maybe 
he or most likely will not be able to quite utilize it as you'd like to. But again, I love that TVT is starting to evolve into this. Let's just send some Marines out. Let's just do it. Let's see where the army is because it's so important to know where the siege tanks are. Because doom drops are doom drops. They are truly doom drops. They are doom squared drops in this game with siege tanks. Yeah, much doom raineth a down upon you when doom. the droppeth beginneth. So you have to watch out. <laughs> yeah. It's almost biblical. Ancient, uh, yeah, I was going to say ancient, that gets uh, ancient Chinese proverb, actually. Much doom yeah. raineth uh, down uh, off it. Ancient, ancient Chinese proverb number 39. Or 39. Oh, I love that 39. 39. It's almost good 38, 38 is good. not quite. Yeah. Right. You know. <laughs> the big book of Chinese proverbs. It's like yeah. one of those books of random facts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Th 38 is Confucius say, men stand behind car exhausted. <laughs> All right. I uh, I can't I can't laugh loud enough. I was attempted to laugh loud enough, but no, that was, that was pretty Pretty darn good right there. Both players are very spread out with these Marines. You got some more sensor towers for Jason trying to see what's around. I'm like perpetually stuck between not laughing and laughing right now. It keeps going <laughs> around. It keeps, it keeps going. It, it keeps going around in my head. Like that is funny, but I I, I have to I have to cast the game, man. You don't have yeah, to cast, man. Take a my... quick break. Yeah, man. When I was working, Whew. I worked for the park departments for a while. The guy who who came in and, and drove the truck, he had about a thousand of those, and just every single day we'd be like, "All right." You know, I forget what his name was, like Dan. All right, Dan, what do you got? All for right, us Dan, today? with the famous Chinese proverbs, bro. Yeah, you know, he'd always have those oh, jokes, man. and uh, you know, oh. double. Double sensor tower over here for Jason clearing things up, and only single for Apocalypse. So sticking true oh, the to their There's particular the style. Oh man, the oh, fight of oh, a lifetime. Bro. This is this is like one of the tower defense games. You just send them out and you hope that oh, they turn around and happen to shoot. Three hit point marine is victorious. Oh man, I oh, love this God. like dusk towers. These little points. These are these are squads sent out to like, feel out the terrain, bro. Like yeah, whoa, clear we the, felt clear it the out way the for these drops. Clear the way. He's gonna get scouted like... anyway. Nicely <gasps> done. Go oh, ahead, you can take him. Forward. Come on, Ramon Marine. Right in the middle. That's funny. Right in the middle. Right in the yes. Middle. He oh. actually moved into range of the siege tanks there. <laughs> that one Marine. Oh. He had it, man. He he was uh, to steal one of your phrase, phrases. He believed in himself there, and he, he was gonna he do believed. it. He wasn't even Rambo. It's like a whole nother level of Rambo. He drops in the middle and everyone freezes because they're so scared. And they're like, man, oh Jason, my God. Jason's so good. He's not using any select all army hotkey. And I just got to say, I was watching Petraeus yesterday and his select all army hotkey was the back mouse button. And if anyone doesn't know, you have a mouse with two extra keys on the left hand side with your thumb. And one of them was the select all army. So he's like, yep, select all army now. Uh, select all army now. And that's how Petraeus plays. But Jason, none of that crap. He's moving out and he's got his army directly done. But but Apocalypse, he's got a he's got an extra Oh, actually Jason has the siege tank lead. Not all of them are out of the map though. Nope, siege tank lead is very important. Oh man. That's kind this of a scenario. Get brutal. Round for that fourth base. Jason looks like taking the pocket fourth instead of the extended. So I'll be changing the matchup. Very passive again. Uh, both players getting to max without very much interaction. Incredibly heavy marine counts too. I'd be curious to see if you started mixing in some marauders here and there, or maybe even ghosts late game. I know it's not really meta, but still heavy marine counts. Oh my god, shanks, three marines just killed a cyclone. That was fantastic. There it is, the left hand side. Sea shanks of Jason are a little bit quicker, but is there the scan? The scan is there, and he gets the first volley off while low ground. Jason is fighting, but not all his marines are fighting with Apocalypse. Apocalypse is so many marines in the high ground, but he's lost all of his siege tanks in that hell, in that, in that, in that reign of doom. It yeah, was a doom in, drop in, on in himself. Siege tank versus siege tank battle. Whoever drops first gets the first shots off, and uh, it's very important to have that quick reaction that drop Jason. as quickly as possible, and that was Jason in that battle. Got a nice advantage there, but immediately remaxing out is Apocalypse and building two tanks at a time compared to the one tank at a time of Jason. So Oh and three three is so much quicker. Look at that. Three three started when I guess plus two just finishing attack. Yeah he's had he's had the uh, upgrade plus. advantage uh for quite some time here and uh, only one grip upgrade at a time. Uh oh, one also engineering bay. Apocalypse in the left hand side with an even an extra CC in Planetary That's Fortress. Jason he needs to do damage or take a fifth base soon. Apocalypse, uh, if he can't move into this, he's got a much heavier marine nice tower. over here. What was that all about? Oh no, oh, big mess, missed up by Jason there. Went forward no with all the left. medevacs while holding the siege tanks. Gets away Boy. with it though. 
Apocalypse starts off that battle with far more Marines, but he's going to decide to pull back. Interesting decision from him, but with all that choking on Jason, only now is he starting a 5th CC. Right now, when the 6th potential CC of Apocalypse is done back at home in his 4th-ish base, I don't know, Dust Tower is one of those maps from like in the base on the left-hand side. You don't even know what to call bases anymore in late-game Dust Towers games. Yeah, you know what? It's just uh, a base is a base. And uh, by any other name, oh. sound is base. Wait, you know? he's based. He's very based. When did that start coming he's in? Based. As like, he's he's like down to as a meme. I don't, know oh, I, don't I don't know. Yeah. I think if we were to he's... talk about the history of memes, we would have to consult uh, Destiny and Nathanius, and I'm sure that they could tell us. Oh, that that would be great. That we should do that in an interview. Should totally yeah. do that. Like, when when did you first start to see this uh, meme, and how did you get into it? Well, it all started when I was a little kid. And, you know, we'll talk about the game right now because this is about to go down. They are Drop even on tank counts. Yet nice Apocalypse job. is a little bit farther back. Jason does yeah. have the tank lead in this fight, and once again, he'll drop. A really abusable and terrain three, up in the top over Apocalypse. here. Taking oh, yeah, a pocket man. fourth, I think, puts you at a bit of disadvantage. Trops oh, first as well. Ooh, oh, picks up again. Jason with the Jason quick. recognizing that he was at the disadvantage there. Nicely done. Also to note, once scans are gone, even though there's a lot of scans accumulated, once they're gone, the siege tanks from the low ground cannot shoot the high oh, ground. Oh, he's hitting them right before in Apocalypse gets 3-3, three, three, but I don't know if it's there's enough. Apocalypse Marines. is coming through here. Too many right here. Jason's getting pushed back. And he started Economic off all these engagements of Apocalypse, Apocalypse has just with more powering rings. through here. Looks like the siege tanks fall back of Apocalypse. And you know, I was saying, the, eventually the scans are going to give way. There's only a couple scans left for Jason, which is very important because if Apocalypse can get that high ground vision, Jason has a little bit of it with medevacs, but ideally he simply scans. And again, Apocalypse, he's got a better economy, period. In each of these engagements, he's had slightly more Marines. That could simply be 10 more Marines. But that Man, drastically changes the field. These players are. They have gigantic gas banks. Oh, my God. But that look at the left-hand side, though. Like, look at Apocalypse's economy. If we go to the top left, he's got two fully mining bases and extra CC. While Jason has only now secured his fifth, while Apocalypse has been on it for five minutes. Yeah. And so many sensor towers. It's almost like the Olympic rings of the Olympic squared or something. Like, we have so Man, many You going have to on. fight in the middle of Venn it. Venn diagram from hell. And we are oh, here we go, but Apocalypse is down first, and his off. Marines are not quite there, so Jason is able to kill a couple of the siege tanks early, yet some of the siege tanks of Jason are not sieged up when there's purely too many Marines here. Yep, nice little help from the Planetary Fortress, with most of the fighting takes uh, takes place away from the advantage. cutting off the oh, reinforcements! No. So All many the are tanks gone. getting taken out. This is it. This is it. He's moving Apocalypse in. Three, He's going three, for the three, kill. Two. It's a small army, though. Is the rally from Jason going to be enough to push this back? 101 army supply of Apocalypse to the simple 40 of Jason. And Jason looks like he's combined with Vikings in the one siege tank. He can push it back, but now Apocalypse takes another base in the top left. Hopefully, he'll take Jason's gold base. I've always, I've always found that funny. I do that all the time. It's fun. Take the island base. But man, oh my, and all these engagements to note, Apocalypse has an upgrade lead, or been at 3-3 to currently the 3-2 of Jason. So either way, his Marines are always just slightly better. Yeah, the advantage of upgrades has been very powerful for Apocalypse, and the economic advantage as well. He's pretty much always a base ahead of Jason, and that Boy, has bunkers. spiraled into this 50 supply lead. I mean, not bunkers, no, building... Upgrading the armor of buildings, I like that. You might, you might as well get it. I have such a big gas bank in. <gasps> Jason pulls SCVs at the front of this attack. Hope, I guess hoping to make bunkers and missile turrets, but he's completely pushed back. Apocalypse is a siege tank count. Well, Jason has none with the head of this army. It is four siege tanks of Jason to the nine of Apocalypse, and Apocalypse is feeling it. This is the first, or the second game best of three? Second game the best of three. Apocalypse won game one, and this could be it. Game two to move on to the Lazarus match. Got to get against... into a nice position over here. It's just about everything. These siege tanks just bypassing the whole siege tank oh, line. Somebody has everything coming from every angle. Will it be enough? SCV is right on top of the Marine tanks, but this. so much army supply. GG. Right Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to support the ASL by hitting the button now.